Hey! Oh, 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 good character. Right? It's related to a story I'm going to share. Um, right. It's another episode of... Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. Billy Joel lyrics. Episode? 159. Yeah, it's very close. <laughs> is it 100? It is 100. Great. I love that we're doing a weird B-side song that isn't on an album. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too. And I love, I love that when I listened to it, I was like, oh, I like this. Yeah. It's fun enough. Yep. I have opinions about it. Not, um, hey, not strong opinions. If you had strong opinions about this song, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You might be an Elvis person. Yeah. Or just really obsessive because I don't know, even Elvis or not, I don't know that this song merits strong opinions. No, I don't think so. Not bad enough, not good enough. Just, yeah. Maybe a very strong meh. Yeah. My strongest meh. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to share some health news. If you have health news, get it loaded. Or you can share it with me, me too. But uh, <laughs> so we, we've talked about the diabetes. We've talked about the back hurting. We've talked about the heart thing you had that you had to have a, do a service done. <laughs> <laughs> I got serviced. Yeah. You took, they took you in for service. Yeah. Uh, okay. Need to hold on to you for a day and then you can drive, drive yourself home. Uh, I gave you a loner. <laughs> I, uh, so I went to the doctor some time ago and got my blood sugar or whatever. And it wasn't great. And, right. and, uh, but it made me mad. And sometimes when I'm mad, uh, I cause trouble. But right. sometimes when I'm mad, I I get very single-minded. Hold on. Get okay. out. Get out. Kitty. <laughs> sometimes when I'm mad, I get very single-minded. And I was like, I do not want to go on diabetes medication. So I need to see if I can change my eating habits, which I haven't been able to do in 50-odd years. <laughs> right. And I am nailing it. Oh, good job, you. I have dropped 18 pounds. What? Yeah. You did, did you have 18 pounds? I guess you <laughs> did. So I, this is the, sometimes I will say this, I am a, I am skinny guy fat. Uh-huh, yeah. And skinny guy fat is don't tuck in your shirt. That's one thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And skinny guy fat means... That when you have a stroke, people go, I can't believe Jim had a stroke, but you will. All right. So I just carry too, a little too a little too much weight. It is not, not even to where I'm uncomfortable, but just I know that's not really the weight I'm supposed to be. Right. And it yeah. is dropping off. Fantastic. Yeah. And I. Uh, so what are you doing? You're just eating correctly? Yeah, but drastically correctly. So, um, are you poorly measuring stuff and all that? No, no, that I won't do that because I don't. So, I'm have you heard the phrase a natural eater? You know what a natural eater is? I've heard that phrase actually. You have or haven't? No. Okay. So, I read it in a book years ago and I thought it described me perfectly. And I know other people who are like this. And, oh, fun. <laughs> And, and if you're a natural eater, what that means is that if you pay attention to yourself and just don't eat mindlessly, it'll occur to you what you need to eat. And wow. you'll eat the correct thing for your health if you just pay attention. Because I'll get a craving for fish. I'll get a craving for a fruit or a salad. And it'll be right about the time when my body... It's just telling me. But yeah. oftentimes, instead of doing that, you're like, well, I, I should probably should do that. But cheesecake sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that, that's me. Yeah. So here's the hardcore thing I've done, because I know myself. Um, I'm not a one cookie guy. Sure. I'm a 50 cookie guy. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. 
So what, what I'm doing is I just don't have any snacks at all. Wow. Sugar and has been. And it doesn't drive you mad? It did at first. Okay. And then you think your, your natural aptitude adjusts? No. What it is, <laughs> no. Because I'm still like, I would love to eat a bunch of crap. But what I what I have found is a reward system that does work for me, which is the scale. Uh huh. And the pants. Yeah, the pants is a good one. And when I focus on that, like OCD level focus, <laughs> uh -huh. uh, it's working to just take the reward that I'm getting, which is that. And also, I actually have a strangely strong willpower if I do decide something. Like I'm really good. My my dad was like, you, did I tell you how my dad quit smoking? No. Oh. He did. He just did. Yeah, that's my mom did that too. I was like, nah. And you're like, oh. I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Oh. It just stopped. And it was weird because he had smoked forever. Yeah. But one day he was like, well, this ain't good for me. Did he do that a long time ago? Well, very long because he's been dead a while too. Sure. Yeah. So it didn't work. Huh? So it didn't work. Yeah, you're right. It's true. It didn't work. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, still impressive. Yeah, I think, you know, there was a time when that's really the only choice you had. True. It just didn't smoke anymore. Um, but it does seem, as someone who quit smoking very slowly <laughs> over the course of many treatments and supplements and still has nicotine mints. <laughs> uh, I can't believe people could do that. Yeah. But it's when there's no other way. You do... You do the thing. Do you remember the Norm Macdonald joke when George Burns died? No. And I loved this joke. I've always remembered it. George Burns died at the age of I don't did George Burns make it to a hundred or was he one? He did, right? He did. Okay. George Burns died at the age of 100, 101 or whatever, which just goes to to show you smoking kills. Right. <laughs> Great. It was such a good, good old Norm joke. Simple Norm. So uh, now, have you been back to a doctor and had new blood sugar done yet? So I learned something, and you like medical stuff. Well, well, your <laughs> yeah. So your A one C, which is the number you care about, uh, right. is a snapshot of three months because it takes three months for your body to fully replace your blood cells in that cycle of dying okay. and replacement okay so, so good yet yeah and so and i thought the one of the things that i really liked about that because that's a pretty big chunk of time three months so i thought well i'll just make a firm commitment to no sugar at least for the three months to, yeah. see, to see what i get and then i thought and then after I visit, I will enjoy a piece of cheesecake or something. Right. Yes. And it, that will be what I enjoy is a piece of cheesecake, not a let's go back to business as usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and I do look great right now. Body wise, I'm like, damn, I look kind of good. You're a lean machine. Yeah, and you can kind of see it in my face a little bit. My face, not like my face ever got real pudgy, but... Yeah, you never really got it in the face. Huh? You never really got it in the face. Yeah, okay. but it, it's still like, I'm like, yeah, okay. And again, I have pants that I had, I was mourning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. I have but, a great section. Yeah. Um, it's like that. And um, I, I'm not throwing them out. Nope. Well, I'll tell you what happened on St. Patty's Day. I decided to go full on. I wore an, a green suit with a green bow tie. I dressed up. Wow. And where'd you oh. go? Uh, work. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But I just wanted to because it was funny to me. But the pair of pants that goes with the suit, they don't fit me anymore. Yes, they do. <laughs> Yay. Great. You're back. And comfy. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I could kind of get in these. No, it was like, oh, okay. Very nice. I had uh, 
the opposite. Um, <laughs> I couldn't fit into your pants. <laughs> uh, I went. Uh, we went to a wedding in Palm Springs a few weeks back, and I was like, "Oh, I will bring the suit that I got married in because it's the nicest suit I have." Sure, and it still fits. It uh, hasn't been that long, um, and didn't try it on. Oh. And then we got there, and oh man, it was as tight as could be. <laughs> it's like, All right, just get through this. Yeah. Uh, don't have anything carbonated or <laughs> the button will shoot off. Don't uh, sit. Yeah, I was <laughs> sitting very like with one straight leg. <laughs> um, but it was like, oh, that's a lesson. Yeah. To, if you're out of town with pants. Yeah. Really work before you get to the airport. Yeah, sitting like a plank of wood. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh, well, I saw a pic that you shared on one of these social medias you're on, and you looked very nice. Thank you very much. Well, I'm I'm all packed in there. Yeah, your lovely wife looked gorgeous, of course. They were you look like a just a sharp couple. Thank you. Yeah, we had to put together, but yeah, the they're underneath yeah. <laughs> behind the scenes. A little rough on my side. Well, let me ask you a little bit of a money question, but not a rude one. Uh, how much is was that suit? Because it was a good looking suit. It's a good looking suit. We got it at Suit Supply, or I got it. Suit didn't pay anything for it. Right. Uh, I think it was about a grand. About a grand. I think so. That's very reasonable for that suit. I uh... Uh, Suit Supply is this play. I don't know if you know it. It's sort of like a uh, men's warehouse, but upscale. Yeah. Not fully crazy priced suits, but they're close. Yeah, and they're nicer and they're yeah, it looked like a nice modern cut. It looked I like the color and Thank I, was, you. I was looking at suits. I'm debating going to be the suit guy in stand up. I thought that might be fun to try that for a while to really dress up. Interesting. I always dress up in yeah. the sense that I make a conscious decision. Like, I fucking, I told you this before, but it's worth saying again, I hate fucking comedian with book bag. Oh, yeah, yeah. Comedian with fanny pack? Come on. Unless, <laughs> unless you're a funny magician and it turns out that you do things from it. Right. It's very distracting. Yeah. I would actually love that. If somebody had a fanny pack and it made me mad and then it turned out there was a reason for it, I would love it. Yes. They're I always a uh, comedian with guitar who would do like five minutes of not guitar stuff first. Yeah. But you can't listen to it. Like you're going to play the guitar. Go. Yeah. Or you're gonna stand <laughs> and say not yet. Um, so what do you wear now for stand up? Uh, so I have some very nice Nikes that look brand new always because I only wear them on stage. And they're a solid red, and I'll wear fancier slacks that are blue sometimes. Okay. In, in, into a nice blue collared shirt because I just like to, I like it to everything to pop. Yeah, fair. Um, We're going to turn one more light because I look like I'm in a, a weed growing operation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Go it's funny because I, I thought, well, your light is a little low, but it wasn't bad. I thought it was actually very moody, so it's fine. It's a little, well, that's slightly better. Yeah, that's better. That's definitely better. Yeah, I'm super well lit now because the wife has made everything nice in here. So I'm actually lit appropriately, which is weird. Fantastic. Yeah, you I are. Also, I have a better camera, too, because she's like, well, if you're going to keep doing this fucking show, here's a nice camera. If you're at what episode 100 yeah she here's a nicer camera and she goes and here's something you should do for the show and i'm always like listen ma'am you're asking for a lot of effort come on ma'am <laughs> i call my wife ma'am <laughs> she likes that <laughs> yeah can i talk to you miss what are you having for yes. dinner miss can you help me with something miss yeah do you have any smaller pants <laughs> 
Here's yeah. a great thing. If you're a, you're married and you're married, and at some point the two of you try to lose weight, a lot of times, and this has happened more than a few times in my life, women will get mad at how much easier it is for dudes to lose weight. Yes, I have heard of that. Yeah. And I get it. It's not my fault. Sue would get mad. Huh? Sue would get competitive. Sue is very competitive, so I don't think she would get mad. She would be at the gym on the elliptical for three hours instead of <laughs> one and shatter her kneecap. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then no, that again, taking care of her, and nobody's losing any weight because we're all shattered and sitting. Yep, I took I up. Went to the and I fucked up my back, so all day long today I've been less than productive. Yeah, definitely a donut. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing. Yeah, try. I started running at one point, and then my knee told me, "Yeah, you're not. You're not doing that no more." Yeah, I had a doctor tell me that. It's like, oh, hey, no, don't. Okay. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to try to lose some weight. He's like, great. You should swim. <laughs> it's low impact. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, don't run because then I'll have to. This was after a knee surgery, by the way. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. So, of course. Start running. You'll be back in there in a year for the other knee. Yeah. yeah. And you don't want to. can't. Yeah. But you're not heavy either. You're just, there's some weight you would not like to have, right? It's that skinny fat thing for sure. Yeah. Well, you can get away with not losing it, but for your own comfort and health, be good to get 15 pounds, right? Maybe. Yeah, ballpark it. Yeah. I haven't heard myself lately. And obviously I don't have a good mental gauge or I would have brought better pants. <laughs> But yeah, no, yeah. I'm compulsively weighing myself, just compulsively, just <laughs> just obsessively. It occurred to me that my entire life this is what I have been. Oh, Jim's Jim's taking karate. Uh, gonna have to hear about karate for two months. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> but not any longer. Nope. And then that's what this is. It's it's I'm like, I'll catch myself and go, well. You know you do this, so talk to yourself. Quietly talk to yourself about this thing. Yeah. Yeah. People definitely got tired of hearing me quitting smoking for years. Yeah. And then I would inevitably smoke again at a party, and 15 people would come over. And like, hey, thought you were quitting. I was like, okay, I'm going to stop telling people stuff. Why am I doing that? trying to hold myself accountable and then i just get mad when somebody tries to hold me accountable yeah hey you know when you meet somebody this is totally random but you know when you meet somebody and you think they're not funny and then they surprise you by being incredibly funny sometimes best i have a friend at work her name's cat and cat is a giant she's just a big late big tall lady she's very sweet um but she was pointing out that somebody had a coffee cup that said, how do I take my coffee? Seriously, very serious. It's one of those dumb things. Okay. She goes, look at this funny coffee cup. And I was like, uh-huh. And she goes, now look at the coffee in it. And the coffee was just 90% cream. <laughs> yeah. And she just goes, I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. That's actually really funny. Really funny, very good observational skills. Yeah. <laughs> And it was like, and that's her whole gig is she's annoyed with everybody. It was like, oh, I think I can be friends with Kat. Right. Oh, yeah. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your birthday? It's been a little while, but how was it? How was it? It was lovely. Did some karaoke. Nice. Had a lot of beers. I stopped drinking liquor because I cannot. Okay. <laughs> Very short evenings when I do that. Is it just the alcohol content just knocks you out? It is, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's age or meds or everything. Yeah. I used to go out and have like four bourbons and be alive the next day. Not in great shape, but now if I have two bourbons, I'm like, this is an emergency and I have to go home. Yeah. <laughs> so it was nice to have beer. Yeah. And 
did karaoke. Then we came back here. Sue had a cake for me. All our, all our buddies were here. It was nice. Well, that's great. Everybody was out by 10. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, you get you get to an age where you're like, all the best events end at 10. Oh, man, it rules. Yeah. They'll have the whole full night. Yeah. And uh, the next morning is not miserable. Yeah, so many events now. <laughs> but... <laughs> huh? For that reason, anyway. Yeah. It could be miserable. Oh, yeah. No, there's plenty of reasons for things to be miserable. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about a, a Billy Joel song. Yeah, we're halfway. Who picked it? Do you remember? I did. That's right. You picked it. You knew it existed. Yeah. Um, and now that you know, how do you feel? Matt? Yeah, Matt. But I'll tell you one thing right away I like. Out of the gate, it sounds like an Elvis song circa late in his career. And I think that's cool. Yes. It sounds like a late, early, well, when did Elvis die? Mid 70s? Something like that. Late 70s. Yeah. So it sounds like Elvis. Vegas era. Yeah. And, but not quite, hey, how did he get so fat era? <laughs> or yeah. like just after the comeback tour uh television special which is an amazing tv special yeah. i've never seen yeah. it. it really is good it's strange how well it's strange how they nailed everything there there was like the one time they captured real elvis because he was yeah. on stage being a person he was being funny the music was great they did oldies they did new songs um he sang uh uh i can dream is like this big hopeful number before pills um uh it was great so it reminded me of just after that not during that but just after that when he was first starting the like hopeful yeah. idea of being in in vegas for a while not realizing that this is it you're just gonna keep fucking doing this and your fans are gonna get older and fatter and weirder looking <laughs> yeah and there'll be the occasional yeah, the one. beginning of the slide kind of yeah but still still in his powers he did a little bit of an elvis impression in the song right yeah a couple of times it felt like it came and went <laughs> that's what i was thinking i feel it almost was like if you were trying to do an impression and you thought well i think i could do this and then as you're doing it, you get embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You and so you stop doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But I liked the music. It's fine. I mean, you know, it almost will always be the case that the melody is pretty good. Yeah. You know, he knows how to do that. And it, it does sound ish like an Elvis song. Um, but, you know, you ultimately remember that the thing that made Elvis' song sound like that was his voice. Yeah. Guy famously does not have a great voice. Yeah. It's good for what he does, for what he does. Um, but yeah, not, he wouldn't cover Elvis, I wouldn't think. I think that's why he does like Stones covers in concerts. He's like, oh, that guy also has a terrible voice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're right. Because Elvis, that was the deal. One of the voices in music. Hold on, I'm going to let an animal into this room. Uh oh, let's see what it is. Come on, it's a dog. Come on, in, Chandler. Uh, another dog. This, one is, platypus. this is blind dog that I just let in who just wanders around. Uh, he's a great, yeah, he's very cute. He'll start barking, and we finally figured out what he's doing. He will start barking a lot, and I'm like. I honestly think he's using Echo to figure out where he's at. Oh, yeah. So he'll, um, so I'm going to give him some food too. Uh, he uh, he will like the Echo and he'll figure out where he's supposed to be. It's very interesting. Makes some sense. So I did. I liked, nothing about the vocals are bad. I think I would have hated it if he would have went full bore and done a lot of Elvis. That would have yeah. been 
So yeah. I'm okay with There's that. A couple of times he tried, you could tell like, oh, he can't get that low. Yeah. So this, I found this was uh, back in the days when I used to buy 45s occasionally. Uh, this was a B-side on a 45. Okay. And I knew it existed. It doesn't live anywhere else, I don't think. No, I think it lives now on one of the of those re-releases of another album where then it has a bonus track. I think that's where it is. I couldn't be sure. Let's see if it tells us. Uh, oh, it's it's on Billy Joel My Lives now. Right. Which makes sense because that's what that is, right? That's just a compilation album, right? Just kind of all the scraps. Yeah. Yeah, a weird compilation because it's not like a compilation of the best of. It's almost like a worst of album. It's like a, an also ran album. Yeah. I don't even own it. <laughs> weird. <laughs> it was like, oh, I don't need that. I have all the little pieces. I can scrape them together myself. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, it's got the cover that's actually, I don't know. I've probably sometimes said I hated it and sometimes I love the cover. That weird yeah. drawing. And who did that? Like one of his kids or something? Yeah. And it's got a kind of a Picasso-ish kind of quality. Right? Yeah, I think it captures something about him. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I, I don't know. If you didn't know it was Billy Joel, you might not automatically guess. No. But you, but you might say to as a joke, oh, that kind of looks like Billy Joel. And then people go, yeah, it's Billy Joel. And you're like, oh. Okay. Great. I'm good at this. Yeah. Give me another shitty drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember who's the guy who directed funny people? Judd Apatow. Yeah. He he's he said of himself, he said, uh he oh, and he said it of Mel Brooks. He said, any drawing of Mel Brooks, if it's accurate, is anti-Semitic. <laughs> right. But, and I sort of feel like that with Billy Joel. If you draw him accurately. You're like, what? Don't, what don't you like about Billy Joel? That's that's me, <laughs> right? What are you doing to him? What are you doing? <laughs> oh, but, that's a photograph. But I did like this song. Um, not hey, let's see if anybody actually commented. Joe, ah, somebody wrote, Joe, you nailed the story and sentiment of the king and his followers. So <laughs> well done, and a pleasure to listen to your song. Ah. Uh, this guy, this guy super convinced Billy Joel's reading this. That's great. <laughs> right. I uh, fucking love shit like that. I love somebody writes random post on Facebook and is just like, hey, I just want to let Joe Piscopo know, keep up uh, the good workouts. <laughs> Do you follow Joe Piscopo? Do you even know where he is? No, but it's Facebook. He'll see it. We'll see it. It's the internet. Yeah. It's, it's a real uh, fucking message in a bottle. Kind of hope. Or maybe yeah. they just, maybe they know this will never be seen, but I want people to know I got his back. Yeah. It's so strange because sometimes the tone of it is they write it as if, do you, do you think you're instant messaging Joe Piscopo? Because <laughs> yeah. there's like this immediacy, like, Hey, Joe Piscopo, I really loved your impression of, of uh, Frank Sinatra. So much better than the other guys. <laughs> and you know who really loved Joe Piscopo's impression of Frank Sinatra? Uh, Joe Piscopo, yeah. Fucking dummy, wouldn't stop. And in the interviews today, still won't shut up about his impression of him. Oh, All right. you can get it. Well, and there's nothing more entertaining than an impressionist talking about an impression he does. Oh, for sure. What um, I, do, I used to laugh very hard at Jay Farrow, who would tweet impressions. Like he would tweet something, some sentence, uh, have a nice day, and then in parentheses, write uh, Denzel voice. And I don't think he knew how funny that was. I oh. think he wanted you to think about his impression. That's pretty great. If it was like a meta thing he was doing yeah. to make an impressionist 
it would be amazing. But I think he's just a little off. He <laughs> 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 doesn't do it anymore, which is kind of a bummer. That's really funny. His impressions were amazing. Oh, yeah. I conjure it up in my head to say whatever sentence you just sent me, sir. Yeah. Den yeah, no, his Denzel is perfect. And it's, and I believe his Denzel Washington, I think he's the first person I ever see do one. Yeah, first I've ever seen. And then, of course, 70 other comics immediately have a Denzel impression. It's really a Jay Farrow impression. Yes, very much so. I think we I. Talk we talk about that with regard to Seth. He has now like 30 or 40 impressions, but they're all somebody else's impression. Yeah. And he's very open about that. It's like, oh, I'm doing Andy Samberg doing Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Dana Carvey, in an interview with Stern, in between Stern fawning over him, <laughs> yeah, would had a lot of insight on how that works and how fun. It's just a part of being an impressionist is you, you somebody will crack it is the, the way he described it is a crack. And I'm like, that's a perfect way to describe it. Yeah. Um, and you know, Dana Carvey is a big part of this fucking song. We've not talked about yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could do all this. Yeah. I bet he could do Elvis and I bet he'd be embarrassed. So he just wouldn't do it. Cause at this point, Elvis, yeah. I wonder if anybody bothers. That's such a weird impression to do. Hey kids, here's my Elvis. <laughs> what's what's an Elvis? <laughs> Once uh Strico, Elvis Stri Strico, that uh skater? Hmm. Doesn't know Presley, but he knows Elvis Strico. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Once long ago, all the faithful held a show down at Elvis Presley Boulevard on Memphis Radio. I like the rhyme right there. I just do. Very yeah. nice. Where the hopeless held a vigil and the nameless made the charts, where the losers lost their sorrow and their lonely and the lonely left their hearts. Well, I think he's being a little too clever, but I actually like it. He's obviously borrowing and paraphrasing Elvis lyrics. Yep. And I think he's talking about the good good old heyday. Yep. Where you could have, you know, write a good song and get it on the radio. Yep. Uh, biopic style. <laughs> yes. On its Sun Records. Yep. And uh, probably a day, well, definitely a day that he wishes he was part of because sure. that, that was his childhood. That's him, a little kid. I'm sure as a little kid, he really liked Elvis before the Beatles sure. was mine. No doubt. Yeah, he would have been, what, 10 or 12 when Elvis was hot. Yeah, and that's perfect when you're a little boy who imagines that someday I might be a man and there might be girls I can kiss and you look at a man like Elvis and go, that'd be cool to be that. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at Billy Joel, it's leather jackets and motorcycles. Yeah. His vibe is a little Elvisy. For sure, yeah. Um, <laughs> I left you, you the next set of lyrics. As I'm listening to the song, I'm like, I fucking love these lyrics and they're yours to say, but I find it kind of love the first verse, the first lyric. Talk about that. Step on these shoes and I'll see you in hell. <laughs> love me so tender I cry. Save me a room at the Heartbreak Hotel. I'm so alone I could die. Uh, well, I have mixed feelings. I, I do, do Love the first one. Yeah. Really great. It's just like paraphrasing various songs. The uh, the the only magic one is I'll see you in hell. See you in hell. <sighs> Love me so tender. Can I save me a room? It's like, okay, we know the songs. It's weird to go to I'm so alone I could die. Yeah. The end of your chorus on it. Kind of a peppy song. Yeah. Don't know what the game is yet. so i'm so alone i could die bums me out in a way as far as being a bad lyric because it's clearly i'm so lonely i could die is and just changing it to i'm so alone is his way of paraphrasing it but it's not paraphrased enough to be making a point no 
it's okay. not alluding to something else. It's just like it feels like lawsuit avoidance. Yeah. Just it, it'll rhyme better or fit better. But yeah, I'm not adding anything to it. Yeah. Unlike step on these shoes and I'll see you in hell is is amping up blue suede shoes a lot. Yeah. And that I like because it's actually kind of funny to imagine <laughs> that that's what Carl Perkins was singing about. <laughs> it is a good heightening. Yeah. <laughs> Love me so tender I cried. Don't see as a second line, I don't hate that, except that it's followed by worse and worse. Save me a room at the Heartbreak Hotel. That's pretty banal. Yeah. Also, what that's not how you get a room. You have to book it. Yeah, that's right. Give you a room. Go to TripAdvisor. See where. Maybe you might not even want to stay at the Heartbreak Hotel. We don't know where it is. Yeah. There was a, when we went to Cambria, Mary Jo and I, we got a room at this place called Shoreline Hotels or something. Uh huh. And you know where it wasn't? <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. TripAdvisor, look look at pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Do yourself a favor, man. Yeah. But um, it's a heartbreak hotel and it's just kind of all bright colors and everyone's in a good mood. Yeah, right? Oh, it, it's just the name. Yeah. It was founded by Devin Heartbreak. <laughs> Does nothing to do with <laughs> you know Devin. Oh, Devin of the Heartbreaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of the London Heartbreaks. Uh, can I do the next one so we're not on, so I don't get stuck with it every time? Yes. All right. I took a ride with my baby by my side, which I feel like was in a different Billy Joel song. Yeah. Down to Elvis Presley Boulevard, where all the faithful cried. And I saw that silent mansion, and I knew that I was lost. They were selling plastic souvenirs of Elvis on the cross. I like it. I love that. I love that. This is obviously from the day Elvis died. He ostensibly was there. Yeah. Uh, and saw Graceland lying quiet. Uh, and I love that it's a swipe at merch. <laughs> yes. But like bad merch. I am old enough and to, I so there's I don't have the best memory, but there's certain things that are seared in my memory. And one of them is an Elvis related image that just was so very strange. And it was this church after he died that people had their Bibles yeah. and Bibles were leather bound Bibles with a picture of Elvis on the front. Yeah. Wild. Weird. Yeah, yeah, a real uh bad sign. Yes, so he, for society. Yeah, and so when he sells says Elvis on the cross, I'm like, yeah, that's not that's not too much or anything. That's exactly right. That's what they were doing. Yeah, and what they continue to I do. I believe that was a real thing. Yeah, he saw. At some point in his life, and he's like, ah, I gotta put that in a song. Yeah, that's one of those you don't need to amp this up, just report it. It 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 does it's it does the job itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was drastic. It, yeah. It is or it is the social critique, just the object. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I do remember just this the Bibles and the you know, Elvis's gospel albums were fine because Elvis was a believer and all that stuff. But by the way, if you've seen Elvis's grave or tomb, it's ostentatious. Oh, yeah. If you, not, that sounds right. If you've seen Frank Sinatra's, it is so understated. Huh. It doesn't have a picture of skinny frank with a microphone like this it doesn't have anything like that it's a plaque huh. with his name some beloved father or whatever to 
these kids or whatever, date of birth, date of death. It's a very uh, good Catholic boys grade. Right. Yeah. I went to it because it was my birthday weekend and we were just trying to find stuff to do. <laughs> it was an underplanned weekend, I guess. <laughs> Where is it? It is in Palm Springs. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we went, and I don't know if we thought it was funny to go. I don't think we did, but I think we thought it was, we at least in some sense felt this was a trivial journey. This is just something to do. Yeah. And it wasn't trivial. When I saw it, I was like, very, first of all, this is what always happens to me in grave graveyards. I think, oh, yeah, I'll just go check this out. And I go, oh, right, it's a graveyard. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. 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 This place is actually kind of a bummer. I, I keep forgetting that. We were just in one the other day. Um, there's a place called Greenwood Cemetery that's about two miles from here. So we're yeah. like, oh, let's walk over there and we'll walk around. And it's an enormous, there's 600,000 graves in this place. Wow. It's huge. Um, we're like, oh, it's a pretty day. We'll walk around. And then you get in there and you're like, oh, yeah. Here's a tombstone for somebody who made it to seven. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, there are birds. There are a lot of good birds there. Yeah. When I was little, my parents took me to a grave, uh, uh, grave place, uh, cemetery. Um, and uh, I don't, <laughs> and I didn't know why we were there. And uh, I was walking around and I didn't see my parents. So I guess I was just by myself for a little while. And I ran into a grave that said Herman Samuel Bruce on it. And I wow. freaked out. Wow. That is my father's name. Whoa. I didn't see my parents around. And <laughs> like, how long was I asleep? <laughs> yeah. And I was freaked the fuck out. And then I eventually got calmed down when my parents found me. And I came to understand why we were there. We were paying respects to his father. Now it tracks. But nobody told me that. Yeah, you could have given young Jim Bruce a hint about what. <laughs> I, my parents, I don't know if they were right or wrong to do this, but if anybody ever died in our family, Jim was going to get to see the body. Oh, boy. Yeah, every time. Well, it's informative, I guess. Yeah. It it brings you to peace with it over time, which is nice, I guess. Sure. <laughs> awkward when it's happening. Yeah. Well, it's there, there's grandpa. Yeah, I think it's better than what my family has always done, which is shelter me from everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's uh, probably a medium. Yeah. So you just look at the legs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Step on these shoes and I'll see you in hell. Love me so tender, I cried. Save me a room at the Heartbreak Hotel. I'm so alone, I could die. It's so funny when I say it that way, just quickly. It just sounds like a bad version of an Elvis lyric at that point. <laughs> so that's like it was translated and then translated back. Yeah, yeah. Google Translate did this one. <laughs> Drive down that road tonight. Everyone has gone. Nobody's home, but the lights always on. I kind of like that a little bit. Yeah, I guess that's fine. The it's, length of, nobody's out there crying for Elvis anymore. Yeah, but yeah, now the lights are always on because it's a tourist trap. Yeah, and uh, and they oh, and the tourist trap thing. The fact that that's what his house ended up being because that's what the money is. It's a bummer. Yeah. But, you know, it, inevitable when you make your house into something like that. Yeah. Museum to yourself while you're alive. <laughs> you're True. Really asking for it. True, because only one of two things can happen to that property. It either becomes a thing people visit or a thing that was sold and demolished. Right. It's There's no in-between. There's no regular family going, oh, yeah, we'll move into the old Elvis estate. Yeah, it, is, it just occurs to me that this song is Billy Joel's very shitty version of Graceland. 
Oh, so, yeah. It was sort of a pilgrimage and mixed feelings. Yeah. But not nearly as well written. Sorry. Oh, those, those lyrics are bulletproof, too. The Mississippi oh. Delta was shining like a national guitar. Oh. I am that following the highway hurt. down the highway to the cradle of the Civil War. Amazing. Yeah, that um he is the child of my first marriage. I remember when I first heard that lyric. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's there's some confessional in that song. And then the, so it's a lot of things. There's confessional in that, and there's lovely like just imagery and and this is none of that. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is just fine. Now this is first. So if if Paul Simon heard the song and went, what if I wrote the good version? That'd be really funny. <laughs> that would be a very funny origin story. <laughs> oh, all right, it's uh, yours. Man, I was beat. I was driven by the heat down to Elvis Presley Boulevard, a one-way dead-end street. Nice. And I smashed my car to pieces, and I said goodbye to youth. I heard all the ugly rumors, but I could not face the truth. Mm. Nice. That Honestly, is like, oh, um, super disappointed by <laughs> the fans and the merch. Yeah. Vibe. And I had to let go of the ideal version of Elvis Presley that I had in my head and move on. Do you think that lyric, I smashed my car to pieces? was a reference to or inspired by any one of the drunk driving problems he has had at times? <laughs> oh, I wonder. I wonder how the timing lines up. Yeah, because he, he did that more than a few times, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like twice he crashed his car into somebody's house. Yeah. Yeah. That... um. Horatio Sands does not do a good Billy Joel impression, but I, I loved those sketches. Really fun and stupid. Yeah. Just <laughs> the driving like this. Just like the stagehand throwing objects onto yeah. the window. Right. And those sketches, I think you will agree, are no, they're nothing if no. Aya Rudolph isn't in there going way over the top with her anger it's so great she's the best i love that lady yeah i'll well any see her in anything i just want to just be i'm like okay i don't care what this is i'm in <laughs> good hands yeah man the show forever no with her and fred armison no i need to you need to there's one season in existence. Okay. It is, they are a married couple. Well, I shouldn't spoil anything because it's, there's some turns. Oh, sir. So oh, that's all I'll tell you. Nice. Well, uh, I, I will make a point of watching it and I'll tell you what I thought. Great. Um, okay. As we close down the song, the next thing is he wants us to save him a room at the Heartbreak Hotel. And as we've said, I don't work. Oh, this work. I don't. He's confused. I don't work at the hotel, sir. I don't know what you're, sir, ma'am, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Drive down that road tonight, everybody. Everyone is gone. Nobody's home, but the lights are always on. Fine. The one thing I will say, not that this was intentional. I think this is just how the song turned out. I certainly don't mind it being repetitive because that's a that's an Elvis song. Yep. That's how lyrics always used to be. I was lamenting this to a friend of mine that you a lot of modern songs will have one lyric that's really good. Like it's just really a nice lyric, but they'll say it 17 times. Oh, sure. And I don't and I don't think it used to be that way exactly. I think there used to be more of an effort to sprinkle it through the song yeah yeah or i'll my peeve is there'll be a really good title and then the title's not in the song ah yeah like that's a good line you probably could have used it yeah considering the rest of the song 
You fucking needed this lyric. Many, many times. Also, it makes it very hard to tell people what song you like. Yeah. You know, it's the one that doesn't go like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoy this song fine. It's it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Were you ever an Elvis fan? Yeah, a little. I mean, we were raised to never buy music and only listen to what was in the house. And my dad had plenty of Elvis 45s. Okay. But not the good ones. He had the like the later ones. Oh. But like the Sun Records 45s. Yeah. Columbia, I think. And it was all, he was starting to sound pretty fat. So it was Some, like Blue Hawaii and shit like that. Las Vegas and like rubbernecking. Rubbernecking, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuff like that. And then I later sought out the earlier stuff and was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Later songs that I do like, I do like um, Bossa Nova Baby is a pretty good little tune. Uh, and um, is it Kentucky Rain? Yeah. Nice. Kentucky Rain's a good jam. Kentucky Rain is the right use of his melodrama. Yeah. It's, you know, like I don't mind in the ghetto. <laughs> no i don't mind it it's you know not not very woke yeah uh, the intention of the song is good and it does that thing that other 70 songs did better which is it winds around back to the beginning is the hook right yeah, right but the, yeah other songs have done that much better songs have done it worse like upon reflection peter paul and mary's where have all the flowers gone? You're like, Jesus, okay, right. So the flowers will be back at the goddamn end, won't they? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but yeah, I was a big Elvis fan for a little while. It bummed me out. I remember when he died. I bought Time Life Tribute magazine with all the pictures and nice. I remember it being the only time my father was sad. The rest of the time he was mad at somebody or asleep or something. Right. That was the only time he was like visibly sad. And I thought it was so weird. And then when I found out the reason, I thought it was even weirder. Oh, so like when you found out he was sad about Elvis, you're like, you didn't well, know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? We're in yeah. Belgium. The first celebrity I ever cried over was Ross Martin. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, good luck. Night show? Huh? The correspondent? No, uh, Ross Martin from um, the Wild Wild West played Artemis Gordon. God, dude. Deep cut. Yeah. And he was in a number of Twilight Zones that he was great in, of course. But I cried about Ross Martin. Huh. I really liked Wild Wild West, and he had, he died. And I still struggle to understand this isn't a new show. <laughs> and, uh, and there was a girl my age at our house who was a friend or whatever. So there was a girl I could potentially flirt with or something. And instead, I'm crying about Ross Martin. Man, you can't blow it any harder than that, probably. Yeah, that's pretty bad. She was very nice about it. No, that's nice. She was very sweet about it. She's like, oh. she. I, I don't even think she ever made fun of me, which was, you know, I almost don't respect because somebody should have. But somebody she, will. It was very sweet. Yeah, Ross Martin. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I know. That's just, uh, I was an Elvis fan, and then uh, when he died, I was, I you know, the way he died on a turlet, and... Grim. Yeah, and he had just, you know, he had just, he was one of the first celebrities I ever knew who had just squandered everything so much. Yeah. And I didn't really understand. I didn't understand then, and I still don't understand in the sense that it's still a peculiar truth, but I didn't understand how trapped he was by his fame. 
Right. Well, he's probably the first person to be that famous. Yeah. So like everything was like we were saying about Graceland. Like he didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> happened to anybody else? And the Colonel Tom Parker thing. You know, Colonel Tom Parker was a bastard. So. I uh, have you watched the Elvis movie? I have not seen it. I have not either. Oz Lerman. Yeah. It feels like an investment that I can't afford. One thing I've heard, because people say Tom Hanks' accent is goofy. Yes. And then somebody else said, I know you think his accent's goofy. That's what Colonel Tom Parker sounded like, which I find very funny. Yeah, I believe it's true. It's like if you did a documentary about Pee Wee Herman and somebody who'd never actually seen Pee Wee Herman goes, yeah, but why does he, why is he, why is he talk that way? That's so dumb. Nobody would talk that way. And you're like, no, he talked no, that way. Yeah. <laughs> he actually talked that way. Well look, well, look at that guy. Oh, look at that. He's thinking. Yeah. He's a thinker. Yeah. Uh, so I'll tell you, this is the clue. This is the only clue you're going to get. The name of the statue is, uh -huh. a, is a lyric in this song. Just the two-word phrase is a lyric in the song. The thinker. Well, this isn't the thinker. This is a similar statue. Oh, no. I don't know any similar statues. Producer, what do you think? It's not the thinker, but he's also a thinker. So I oh. guess this one's a thinker. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. I don't know. I gotta brush up on my Rodin. <clears throat> yep. No idea. Well, I'll tell you the name of the statue then. You know? The name of the statue is The Thinking Man. The Thinking Man. Thinking Man. Yeah. And we have talked about this song, which at this point is barely a clue because we've talked about most of them. A clue. Thinking man. This is a... Oh, man. You can feel it, huh? You're almost there. I know it's there somewhere. <laughs> Fuck. Wow, right? Yeah. Damn it. All right, well, um, I'll just tell you. Let's just cut to the chase. It's sleeping with the television on. Oh, shit. I don't know where that lyric is. All right, let me uh, look it up for you, and I'll, I'll read it to you. But, uh, oh, well, you were just never going to get it then. I'm glad we just moved on. Uh, it's more of a thinking, man. Yeah. Yep. Fuck, nice. Right? Got me. It's one of the more clear-cut uh, clues I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I'm just going to grab it. Wow. Diane is the girl in that song. Yes. Lovely lady. That's our producer's middle name. I did not know that. That was good trivia for the kids at home. <laughs> <laughs> if you're playing along, if you had <laughs> Diane, just say so in the comments. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we're gonna send you a question. Real easy trivia. Or at least I think so. Um, uh, in the video for the song The Longest Time, yeah, is Billy Joel's occupation. Okay, so ooh, so an uptown girl, he's a mechanic. Right. Uh uh. Garbage can fire starter. <laughs> so you're in the neighborhood. Uh, is he a sanitation worker? Yeah, after a fact, he is a janitor. He's a high school janitor. A janitor. Yes. Okay. I was pretty close. We're good. Yeah, the... It just evokes trash. Yeah, the Uptown Girl one, I always remember because he's... You know, he's a grease monkey from that one. Yep. yep. And keeping the faith, he's a defendant. Yep. <laughs> it's funny when, when Billy Joel dressing up like a janitor or a mechanic, these are all things you could imagine him doing, so that's fine. Yep. He didn't overreach. Yeah. 
you you don't imagine that then he dates a model. No. But, <laughs> but you don't imagine that anyway. Yeah. Real life. <laughs> yeah, that dude oh. that dude has nailed a lot of what it means to be alive. It's true. It really guy. You know, honestly, think about this. The guy did some solid drinking. For sure. And I did a little bit of drinking my own self. You've done some drinking. But then he did the stopping drinking and still having a functional body. Yeah. He had kids. He got married. He lost money. He made money. He thought of, he made amends with his fucking father. Amazing. Jimmy. Kevin. Huh? Didn't do that one. I haven't done that one. No, yeah. I uh your father your father is no longer amongst us, right? No, he's out there somewhere. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Still with us somehow. Okay. But he's not, not a person you talk to. Yeah. He's not a dead. He's not a dead person. Not yeah. yet. I haven't seen his legs, but I don't think so. <laughs> but he's <laughs> not a person you talk to, so that's a right. So yeah, dead in a sense. Yeah, that'd be sense. Yeah, what then, uh, what are we doing next? Billy Joel fucking nailed it. All right, well, listen, I I, I picked so many different songs, and then we go through our list and go, no, that that one. So yeah. so I'm pulling a trigger on one that's held back. Okay. During the week, I'm going to do some research and make a list for us. Of what's available. <laughs> That's, I really appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. So, I would like us to try to be as pretentious as possible while discussing this. Okay, I like that. So that it seems like it's very deep and meaningful. We didn't start the fire. Wow. All in the three-hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> the densest the densest lyrics with the thinnest meaning possible yeah truly just a list it's like analyzing dave letterman's top 10 lists what does this mean what is this <laughs> why did he put this one here chronology oh hmm, yeah hey. My favorite top ten list of all of time of all time for Dave Letterman. I've always remembered the top ten numbers between one and ten, and one of them they had one that was a tie, and one of them was like seven point five. Ah, great! Oh, fucking love David Letterman. Best in the biz. Yeah. <laughs>